Ultra Sphinx, let's hear it. Question. What happens when the irresistible force meets the immovable object? If you want to build ultimate power and strength, then there may be one form of exercise that's better than any other. Isometric training. And not just isometric training, but isometric training used the way I'm about to explain. So if you've watched this channel before, then you might know a little bit about muscle fibre recruitment. So whenever we engage in any exercise, we need to recruit muscle fibre in order to make that movement. So if we throw a punch, if we lift a weight, then we're using the muscle fibres in our muscles and they're working as the kind of primary drivers of that exercise. They give us the force and they allow us to do whatever it is we're trying to do. Muscle fibre recruitment refers to how many of those muscle fibres we can use in one go. And the surprising thing is that most of us have a lot of dormant, untapped potential because we can only use about 30%, up to 50% for the very most elite athletes of our muscle fibre in one go. And this is because we don't want to fatigue ourselves completely, we don't want to injure ourselves, so our central nervous system has a kind of suppressant effect to prevent us from using 100% of our strength at once. But certain types of situation can allow us to tap into this strength. Hysterical strength is when a mother sees her child trapped underneath a car and she's able to call upon superhuman power to lift the car off the child. You hear stories about things like this happening. We don't know how accurate those stories are, but it's certainly likely that there's some truth behind the tales. And what's probably going on here is that a sudden release of adrenaline and other neurotransmitters and hormones is allowing our body to retrieve this kind of untapped strength, this hidden potential because we're in a dire need for it. Another example of just how strong we are without even realizing it is what happens when we get electrocuted. If you've ever seen on TV or in a cartoon someone get electrocuted, they're always thrown across the room. And the assumption you might think is that it's some kind of explosion blowing them backwards, but actually it's nothing like that. The reason they get thrown across the room is because their muscles are all contracting at once because the current is causing them to do that. And that means that just that strength alone is enough to throw them across the room, just tensing the muscles in their legs and their abs is throwing them across the room this way. If you could tap into 100% of your strength, you'd be able to do that at will. And using a form of training called overcoming isometrics, it may be possible to tap into this dormant strength. This is because we're reducing the suppressant effect of our central nervous system. So in overcoming isometrics, what we're doing is we're pushing or pulling against an immovable object. So in a typical exercise, you lift something that's heavy and you can only just move it 10 or 12 times for your curls. But in an overcoming isometric exercise, you're moving something or trying to move something that just won't budge. So you're stuck in just one position. It's isometric, meaning it's static and you're not going anywhere. You're using maximal contraction, but with no range of motion. The other form of isometric exercise is called yielding isometric. That's where you're holding something in position purposefully that you could curl or you could press or whatever, but you're just holding it in that one position until you give out and your arms give way and you lower the weight. But it's overcoming isometric that we're looking at here. This is the kind that you use to build pure strength. And the reason for this is basically that you're using a maximal contraction for the longest time possible. So if you want to increase your strength normally, you'd use some kind of powerlifting or weightlifting technique, and that would usually involve lifting a weight that's close to your one rep max once, twice, or three times. And because it's so close to your one rep max, you're calling on as much strength as possible, and your body adapts to give you more strength. But even when you're lifting a one rep max, you're still only maximally contracting the muscle for a brief period. So say you were to curl a one rep max, which is not a great example, but it, it's useful to demonstrate while some sat down. So what would happen is you would be using 100% of your strength, but only for a brief second because you've got momentum, you've got gravity, and you're only using the maximum strength at the point where you struggle most. On the other hand, with a static contraction exercise, you're pulling or pushing against something and using 100% of your effort. And because you're staying in that one position, you will continue to use 100% of that effort. And because there's no fear of dropping the weight on yourself or injuring yourself, it's relatively safe to do this. It's no coincidence that Dennis Rogers, who many people think is the strongest man alive pound for pound, uses this form of training. Um, he will use overcoming isometrics by bending steel and uh, pushing against things that won't move. And in an episode of Stanley's Superhumans, they observed his muscle fibers at work and found that he was able to recruit a higher percentage of muscle fiber than your average Joe. 
and this could be attributed to genetics, but it's also likely that some of it is down to using overcoming isometrics, which I say is what a lot of old time strongmen would do. Even Bruce Lee, you can attribute a lot of his incredible power to overcoming isometrics. This is a form of training we know that he used, quite different from a lot of other people. And then he's someone else who's got all these impressive feats. We don't know if they're real or not, but he's been said to be able to punch his little finger through a can of Coca-Cola, hold a barbell out, 40 kilograms, for a long period of time, do those one finger push-ups. So regardless of whether that specifically is true, point is there's no denying that overcoming isometrics is fantastic for building a kind of strength that you might not already have if you're not using this form of training. Both from the magnitude of the EMG signal and from the fact that this entire area of the screen is whited out, he's able to activate a lot of motor units, a lot of muscle fibers. There are certainly other people walking around that have um, muscles that are just as big as yours. Uh, however, for some reason, uh, you're able to activate more of those muscle fibers. Once again, this is said. Specific adaptations to impose demands, I've said it a lot of times, but if you want to train for anything in particular, you have to do that thing. And in, in the case of overcoming isometrics, you're trying to recruit more strength than you have access to. So that's sending a very clear signal to your body that it needs to adapt and give you more strength. So it only follows that this would be such an effective way to build pure power. The first thing that you see is that we're going to have to turn the gain down on the EMG machine. He's off the charts. We had the machine set up for most of the, the general population and athletes that we test in this lab. And obviously he's not the same. So what I wanted to do in this video is a recap on that because I have gone over it before, but I've got a lot of new subscribers now, but also talk about what the best way to get the best results from that kind of training is. And the first thing I want to go over is just how long to hold that maximal contraction for. And according to research, if it's strength and power you're interested in, then you should be holding these positions for about six seconds. So if you're pushing against the wall, you're gonna hold that for six seconds, and that's one repetition. You don't wanna do it for too long because you'll fatigue your central nervous system. And if you don't do it long enough, then it's not enough of a challenge to be that much different from any other form of exercise. So six seconds seems to be the golden number, but I'm sure you can vary it a little. The other thing you might be wondering is whether it can truly build strength through a full range of motion or whether it will only build strength in that one position. Well, it turns out that most of the strength gains will be at that joint angle. However, you will get around uh, 10 to 30%. Uh, the results vary depending on who you read, but 10 to 30% of overspill into other joint angles. So in other words, if you train this position, then you might get some benefit here and some benefit here, but this position is gonna remain unaffected. And that means that in order to get the best results from overcoming isometrics, you really wanna train in at least three positions, three different joint angles. So you might do the beginning of the movement, hold it around here, just where it starts to get hard, the middle of the movement, where you're normally doing the kind of maximum contraction, and then the top of the movement, just before you would start to lower it, and you'd hold each one for six seconds. I would recommend even breaking that down further into four, just to make sure you're completely covering the full range of motion. Of course, there are other utilities for overcoming isometrics, where you might, for instance, use it to train a specific stumbling point, a specific failure point in one exercise. So say you're doing bench press and you find that you always fail sort of here. That's where it becomes most difficult as you're reaching your failure point. Well, then you might do some isometric um, overcoming isometrics here, just to build up that extra bit of strength at the point where you usually fail to help yourself all the way through. Another way you can use overcoming isometrics, which won't involve going through each different joint angle, is to focus on just the starting strength, just the beginning of the movement. And this way, you can use something that's called explosive isometrics or ballistic isometrics. And here, you're not moving, but you're doing so explosively, which might sound a lot like a contradiction in terms. But if you imagine it, say you're pushing against your own hands, this is an example, then instead of just pushing it, I'm gonna start off by immediately trying to contract as much of the muscle as possible to recruit as much of the muscle as quickly as possible as I can, as though I'm exploding into that full contraction. You can also do that at different um, joint angles, but particularly for the start of the movement, for the starting strength, that would be very useful for, say, a runner trying to get the most explosive start off the box, or for a, someone throwing punches to try and get the fastest delivery etc. And in terms of how many sets and repetitions you should do, I couldn't find any concrete advice, so I can only share what I've been doing. And I say because this is 
essentially equivalent to doing one rep max, which you wouldn't normally do for too many sets and reps. I say do the same here and maybe train each angle three to six times at most. And you don't want to over fatigue yourself, but it is a bit safer than doing one rep max. So in total, if you're going through three positions and you're doing three to six different uh, reps at each of those angles, that's still quite a lot of work and it should do just fine. You should use overcoming isometrics at the start of your workouts before you get fatigued and that way you can recruit the most strength and get the best strength benefits. If you do reverse pyramid training where you start with your heaviest weight and then go down, which is the way I like to train, then you can think of your overcoming isometrics as being heavier than your one rep max. So you can start with overcoming isometrics and then drop down to a really heavy repetition and down and down. If you're wondering whether or not this form of training is useful for building muscle mass, then unfortunately, not really. It will increase your strength and power through increasing your muscle fiber recruitment or maybe build muscle density and tonus, but it won't swell your muscles or increase your muscle endurance. It's not great for bodybuilding style training. It will build your strength and having more strength is great for building mass in other ways. And like I say, this can go great at the start of some kind of massive drop set. So there's ways you can combine it together. If you wanted to use isometrics for building muscle mass, then you'd want to use yielding isometrics where you're holding a weight that you could curl or press, but you're just gonna hold it in position until you fail. And you'd wanna do that for longer durations, 20 to 60 seconds. And this will pull the blood and build up the metabolites, which provide the stimulus for growth. I'm gonna talk more about that in future. And I might also talk about stretched isometrics. So let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to hear more on that topic. But finally, now I just wanna go over how you would actually implement some of these ideas because obviously, Overcoming isometrics is not something that you normally do and there aren't tons of tools in the gym or at your local fitness store that can help you to do it. You've got to get a little bit creative. So one way to do it obviously is to go onto a resistance machine and to set it too high so you can't push it or pull it. This works to an extent but it's hard to change the angle. So slightly better still is to just find something that doesn't move. You can train like the Indian wrestler Gamma and push or pull against a tree or if you don't have a tree nearby, you can use your own wall or a door frame. And in order to change the angle that you're training at, you need to change your position. So I've been looking at how you could use a, the top of a door frame for overhead presses. I've seen a lot of people recommend that, but they don't seem to think about the fact that they need to train at different angles. So the way you might get around that is to stand on a chair and then bend your legs to different degrees whilst pushing against the ceiling of your door frame. Obviously anything that you can hold you can try and pull apart or bend or squish and this is how a lot of old-time strongmen trained. This is how a lot of current strongmen build their strength. It's great for grip training and just that kind of crushing strength which is so useful in a range of different situations. So one example of this might be to find an iron bar and try and bend it or so I've seen people roll up frying pans which is insane or use a rope and pull it or tear a phone book in half, this kind of thing. Those are examples of um, overcoming isometrics where you're using 100% of your strength, eventually it might give out, but until then, you're trying to recruit all of that muscle fiber. Another option is to use something called self-resistance, and this simply means that you're using your own body to provide the resistance. And a simple example is this kind of chest press move, which is similar to a pec fly. I'm squeezing my arms together, and if I want to change the angle, what I need to do is change the lever arm, which I can do by moving my arms outward slightly. Another example is to resist yourself whilst trying to curl. And a great one I find is to resist yourself whilst trying to do a sit up. So I put my um, forearms on my knees like so, and I try and push my body downwards, fold it in half, making sure to use my abs specifically. And again, I can change the angle just by bending my arms to provide the resistance at a different point. And one thing that's great, whether you're using a wall or a tree, whether you're using your own body, is that you can change the angle in a kind of slow way, which means, for instance, I can push against my arms like this and then just allow myself to move ever so slightly as I go. So I can actually train through a slightly larger range of motion that way. But how you work that into your sets and reps is up to you. Remember, the aim here is not to fatigue yourself. This is a very intensive form of training. Another great thing about these self-resistance exercises is that you can do them anywhere and no one even has to know. So if you're in a conversation, it's pretty boring. You can just secretly be training your abs and you know, interesting, real interesting. They'll just think that you've got constipation or something, no big deal. I've also built a whole load of different contraptions that I use for overcoming isometrics. If you're a fan of this channel and you've been watching for a long time, then you might remember my 
greatest invention, the rope attached to a stick. So here I've attached a rope to a stick, a metal stick. It's actually used to be a pull-up bar, so it's perfect because it won't bend. It's designed to take a lot of weight. You can stand on the pull-up bar and try and curl or um, row the weight, the, the rope, or vice versa. You can hold the bar and you can stand on the rope and you can do all kinds of different things with that and it provides the kind of resistance. What Bruce Lee did was he had a chain attached to a piece of metal and he would try and curl or press that metal against the chain. But a rope is much cheaper, much more practical. If you stand on it, wear shoes so you don't hurt your feet or slippers if you're me and you're lazy, then you can provide all the resistance you need. Like I say, you can get a rope from Amazon or something and mine I think costs five quid. So this is a ropes are a really useful piece of training equipment. You can also just try and tear them. You can hold them at different lengths to change the angle. They're fantastic. So invest in a rope if you want a really cheap and easy piece of training equipment. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting guys. If you did, then please leave a like, please subscribe, hit the bell button if you'd like to get notifications. Um, if you want to help this channel and it's been growing fast, thanks to all of you guys. So you're already helping a great deal, but if you want to help more and see more like this, then one of the best things you can do for me actually is to follow me on social media. I'd love to see you over on Instagram and Twitter and also Facebook where you can hear about my latest videos and my other escapades. Um, also share this video on Reddit if you wouldn't mind. That helps a massive amount. Likewise, if you're a member of any forums, etc., then just sharing it around helps so much and I really appreciate that. So like I say, hope you found this useful. Let me know in the comments what you think. If there's any forms of overcoming isometrics that I missed out or that you've thought of yourself, would love to hear them. And I'll see you next time where I'll be talking about something related to this or maybe brain training or productivity or parkour or martial arts or working online. Who knows? So if that sounds good, then stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and bye for now.